So let's look at an example of um, looking at power series, what we got from another method and using the fact just very lightly that that has to be equal to the Taylor series for that function. So the example is inverse tan of x. And in almost every book, uh, certainly in Stewart's book, uh, you'll find a derivation that starts from the geometric series that tells you that the, the tan inverse tangent is a power expanded around zero, is a power series with only odd powers. That's because it's an odd function. That's very general. Uh, alternating coefficients, which is always nice. Um, and the coefficients are just one over the power. So those are all odd numbers as well. So here's the expansion in terms of summation notation. And uh, partly because it comes from the geometric series, we only expect this to be true for um, x, the absolute value of x less than 1. Now, you can push that a tiny bit. It's actually slightly better uh, than the geometric series, but we're not going to focus on that right now. But we do know from our general theorems that this really should be true as long as absolute value of x is strictly less than 1. Okay, So we got this not from the Taylor uh, method. It wouldn't be incredibly hard to just start taking derivatives of inverse tangent and finding the pattern, but it's not super, super easy. Um, but we, uh, by the uniqueness of power series, it has to be true that inverse tan of x, if you call that f, um, it's equal to, because it has a power series, we know that from other methods, that power series has to be the Taylor series. So you've, it actually shows the Taylor series does converge, at least for these x's, and is equal to the function, the best situation we can have. And so that tells us some interesting stuff. Suppose somebody says, what's the third derivative of the inverse tangent function at zero? Now that's the easiest kind of question to answer here. What's happening at the base point? That's really what the, the Taylor series expan expansion focuses on. Whatever base point you choose, what is happening there, especially to its derivatives. In this case, um, we could use the term Maclaurin series because we're using a equals zero. So in particular, the third derivative of inverse tangent at zero is um, if you equate this quantity with the coefficient of x cubed right here, minus one third, and then move the three factorial over, you discover the third derivative of inverse tangent at zero is almost staring you in the face. It's not quite because you have to remember the, the factorial factor, um, but it's really close to staring you in the face. So this expansion tells you a lot about what this function looks like right near the base point. In particular, every one of its derivatives at the base point is, is very easy to get. So that's an example of using that identification, uh, that uniqueness of power series. So um, let's look um, to, to keep, keep going with our recap, and then we'll do one more example of how to use this practically. Um, we've got a library of functions. We've got the binomial expansion of 1 over 1 minus x. This is, this is great, mainly because this is such a simple series. This isn't the world's most, um, most complicated function either. But the main thing is that this is incredibly simple on the right-hand side. The next one, of course, is most interesting because we already have, are totally in love with this function in calculus, e to the x. And the right-hand side ain't, ain't so complicated either. It's a little more complicated. It's got these factorials on the bottom. But that's not surprising because if you do do Taylor on this, you see those factorials coming out very easily. Cosine and sine um, have similar kind of behavior with factorials on the bottom, but cos cosine's an even function, you only get even powers, because sine's an odd function, you only get odd powers, and they've got these alternating signs. Some really cool relationships between e the x, cosine x, and sine x, but that's for another video. Inverse tangent, we just looked at an example of that, that's most easily gotten from starting with the geometric, and log of 1 plus x is most easily gotten starting from the geometric. Um, hopefully uh, you've looked at that already, and that's an again alternating, and now it's just x to the k over k. Notice, no factorial, okay? Um, all these ones are pretty nice. We always love to see that alternation because that um, can often make approximation results easier, um, although you don't have to necessarily have an explicit alternating factor in the coefficient, you might be able to get alternating by maybe having a negative x in some examples. Okay, so there's one more, which uh, just happens to be, I haven't focused on yet, but this is where um, Stuart puts it, and that's a generalization of um, really the um, the binomial, uh, sorry, the 1 over 1 minus x, the geometric series, and that's what happens when you take 1 plus x, we've changed it to a plus just to sort of make it standardize a little bit more, um, to any power. 
And it's a cool thing because it connects to the binomial theorem from algebra. If you just read this statement um, and you take the infinity away, make it a finite number, um, and think of alpha as a positive integer, this is the binomial theorem that is just pure algebra. No infinite series, no real calculus necessary to understand it. But the really cool thing is if you make this an arbitrary real number and you extend the definition of a choose coefficient um, to let it let the top be an arbitrary real number, then this is still true. And it's an, a true a true fact. But now this is going to, in general, be an infinite series. Um, notice this is how you would write out the ch a choose coefficient, like n choose k, often ch uh, denoted n c k. Um, if you write out the top without using any factorials, and you don't write it in a way that like uses canceling factorials. This is one of the reasons I tend to emphasize from the very start for choose coefficients, writing it out in this explicit way, because when alpha is a real number, there is no other really good way to write it. Um, there's no such thing as alpha factorial, uh, or at least not something we understand as alpha factorial. So um, that's another one on our library, and it's, it'd be a different video to really focus on that one, but it's super important. Um, okay, so I want to remind you that however you got the series, a big, big use of that is to approximate a function with some some degree Taylor polynomial. You truncate the series and don't use the whole infinite thing and do some approximation. Um, we can do that exactly as we started to approximate a function. We still usually will want some re remainder estimate for that, but now we have more uh, flexibility in terms of what remainder estimate to use. So let me show you that. A calculation you would often want to do for probability um, or if you're like building a careful table of probabilities, the e to the minus x squared function is the famous normal distribution or Gaussian or bell curve. Um, I haven't normalized it just to make that make it simpler, uh, just the, the number simpler. But this is a calculation that would in, that would have to do with the probability of some distribution, uh, some random variable between like being between like zero and 0.2. So how would we do this? How would we estimate this? We know we do have techniques for doing numerical integrals. We could use trapezoid rule, or if you know Simpsons, we could do that kind of thing. But it's kind of nice for certain kinds of examples. Um, you can do it in a, a way that's a little bit more kind of algebraic, and maybe tells you a little bit more about what's going on, and isn't just kind of like feed it to some big process that looks like a, just a bunch of numbers mushed together. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to write out the power series for this guy, at least the first few terms. In other words, we're really going to look at a Taylor polynomial and integrate a polynomial. That's easy. Um, and then see where we need to cut it off. And we'll use an alternating series estimate. So um, e to the minus x squared, we're just going to plug in minus x squared into the e to the x series. And we're going to get um, x to the fourth over 2 factorial. Notice this is the this is coming from x squared over 2 factorial, but I'm plugging in minus x squared into that, and so it becomes a plus x to the fourth. And then it goes back to minus x to the sixth over 3 factorial. And I'm hoping I could go back and extend this pattern if I really need to, but I'm hoping that's going to be enough. Okay, so that's easy. We can just see, let's just integrate that term by term. Oh, I don't really need this anymore. Okay. So that's going to be x minus x cubed over 3 plus x fifth over 5 times 2 factorial minus x to the 7 over 7 times 3 factorial plus x to the 9 over 9 times 4 factorial. And we'll see if we need any more. Okay, and that's evaluated from 0 to 0.2. Okay, and then the 0 doesn't do anything, so you just get 0.2. 0.2 to cubed over 3 plus, oh, and what did I want this? Ooh, I think I, I think I just, uh, let's see, let's this, let's say approximate this to within, I think I had it, but it just got deleted or something, to within, let's say, 10 to the minus 7. So we're going to keep track as we go. What does this look like roughly? Mm, very roughly 10 to the minus 5th, but it's a bit bigger than that. But then divided by something, well, it's, getting, it's getting there. Okay. Uh, minus, let's write down one more, uh, 7 times 3 factorial. Okay, let's see. Maybe we don't even need more than that. Okay, and let's just evaluate those very explicitly and just keep track of the sizes as we go. So that's going to be minus 0.0026666, okay? I'm 
actually one, one more, plus this guy, 0.000032. So if we had, so now this is an alternating series of numbers. If we had truncated before this guy, the only estimate we would get is that the error is less than this, but that's definitely not 10 to the minus seventh yet. Okay, but what about this one? That's getting a bit better. Uh, ooh, I need to evaluate it. Aha, okay, that's not less than 10 to the minus seven, but let's add that in. Okay, and then the next one, so we did really need one more um, to get the error estimate. So the error estimate, error size is less than the size of the first neglected term. And that's going to be this with a 0.2 plugged in. And that's way less than 10 to the minus 7th. Okay, so this is going to be good enough. And we'll just put that together. And we get... And if you have a numerical integration routine on the calculator, you can verify that this is to at least to within 10 to the minus 7th, a little better. Um, that's what it's going to give you.